coast to coast and right here in North Texas. It has been an emotional past few days for our frontline health care workers. How about this image of registered nurse Chandler Cummins, the first to receive a vaccine in Tarrant County and in Dallas County. We watched as five health care workers there got their shots at Parkland, all part of a massive nationwide effort and the fight to stop COVID-19 is certainly expected to get a little bit more help in just a few hours from now over the next day or so. The FDA will be looking at Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine. We're learning more about this new vaccine and the difference between it and the one that Pfizer has now made public. We're saying good morning to Chris Adegui, who is live in Fort Worth as the government ready to ship out millions of doses of that Moderna vaccine the moment it gets FDA approval. Yes, Mark, Pfizer's vaccine was rolled out this week and Moderna's vaccine could get the approval to do the same later on this week. There are some key differences between the two vaccines that might make one better than the other given a certain facility or individual. The Moderna vaccine has shown a 94.5% effectiveness during trials, preventing severe disease and cutting down on asymptomatic inject infection. The cases of COVID-19 in the placebo group grew while those in the group that received the vaccine remain mostly flat. Like the Pfizer vaccine, there are some expected side effects like fever, headache, and fatigue. Some of the differences between the two, the Moderna vaccine does not have to be kept as cold as the Pfizer vaccine. Instead, it can be kept in temperatures more like your regular freezer. So for areas that might not have the proper storage capabilities for the Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna vaccine makes more sense. But the Moderna vaccine was not studied in children, so only people 18 and older will be authorized. Moderna says as soon as they get the approval, they have more than 6 million doses that they are ready to send out to more than 3,000 locations. That advisory committee will meet tomorrow, and shortly after they meet, we expect that they could get the approval, much like Pfizer did shortly thereafter from the FDA. Kara, back to you. Okay, thank you, Chris. So as we continue to see high case numbers, the CDC is not advising that you travel, but grab your phone, let us know. You can vote in our poll right now. What do you plan to do for the holidays? A small gathering, virtual gathering, large gathering, or not gathering at all? WFA.com slash vote now. The majority of people are saying they will not be gathering at all, while 40% say a small gathering and a very, very small percentage of you say large or virtual gathering. Keep weighing in, joining the conversation using the hashtag I am up. Mark, back to you. All right, thank you for that, Kara. At 636, it's time for your morning rush this Wednesday. Little M police want to know who torched two cars in a driveway. So would the owners. You can see the footage there. Those cars are certainly in bad shape. Somebody set them on fire last Wednesday, leaving behind the words Trump 20 on the garage. The family says it happened after they posted a Black Lives Matter sign in the yard, which was also, as you can see, vandalized. Former presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg will have a place in the Biden cabinet as he is tapped to head the Transportation Department, the first openly gay cabinet secretary in U.S. history. At 38, he would also be the youngest member of Biden's cabinet. The president-elect is also expected to name former Michigan Governor Jennifer Granholm to lead the Energy Department. And a welcome update on the University of Florida basketball star who collapsed on the court last weekend. Keontae Johnson is now breathing on his own. He's talking with family, FaceTiming with teammates. No statement yet from doctors on what they think caused his collapse. Johnson and some other teammates did test positive for COVID-19 over the summer. The family and close friends will hold a private wake and memorial service for Charlie Pride in Dallas this week. A public celebration of his life will be announced at a later date. This is all according to a representative for the country music legend who died from complications of COVID-19 this past Saturday.